Hey, y'all. Welcome back to episode two of the Yarn Everywhere podcast. I am so excited to share some stuff with y'all today. I am going to start off with some of my finished projects. I forgot a few in the last episode. So while I was thinking of things this week, I just kind of jotted down some notes. So hopefully I am super organized for today. So first, I want to share with you my Sassy Infinity Scarf. I finished this a few weeks back and I forgot to tell y'all about it in my last episode. I made this with some of my hand-dyed yarn. I used my classic teal color and my jewels colorway. Jewels is one of my all-time favorites. I know I say they're all my favorite, but this is really one of my all-time favorites. I think it was my very first like repeatable colorway that I wrote down the notes and details for. I have always loved jewel tones, so this is my jam. Let me show y'all what it looks like on so one of the things that I am trying to do is slowly go back and rework some of my original designs and make them with some of my yarns and then update the photos and update the patterns because I don't really like my original template. This one has been on my bucket list for a while and I'm so excited to finally have it done and I can't wait to get some photos and update that pattern. I love infinity scarves because... I can throw it on with a sweatshirt and then I can have my ears covered in the colder weather. Like this legit is how I wear mine when I'm outside. <laughs> like I don't even care. It's like, I like having my ears covered. And then when I get in the store or in my house, I can just throw it back down. So this is how I normally wear it. I decided to make this scarf super, super big so I could have it just like all chunky and built up around my neck and just super cozy. If it's not super, super cold, I will wear it just wrapped twice and just kind of leave it hanging down. I'm super excited to have this finished and I made it in colors that will go with what I wear because I wear a lot of grays and blacks and I think this will go really well with them. That is the first thing on my finished objects list. I mentioned in the last episode about me binge crocheting the sunshine ice coffee cozies. I have five of them done now. My goal is to get 10 of these done before I take them to the tea shop. So I'm super excited to be halfway there. I absolutely love these little tags. This one says my cup of tea. And this one says beautiful. I just think they are so cute and really just level up the cozy. I get these tags from Angie and Britt and I will post a link below to their shop. I also get their really cute coffee tags that I like to add to my coffee cozies. Another one of my finished projects is this Bristol cowl. I finished this one a while back too, and it was kind of in my pile and I forgot about it until I was talking to my yarn club members about doing a crochet along this month. And I gave them the options of um, different patterns that we could use. And they decided to go with this one. It's an unpublished pattern design of mine, and it hasn't even gone through testing yet, but I feel comfortable enough doing it because it's a really simple pattern. Um, so we will be doing the crochet along this Saturday in the private Facebook group for my yarn club members. And I'm really excited about that. This was made with my tweed yarn in the color champagne blush. I'm sure y'all know by now that I am obsessed with blushy pinks. I couldn't resist keeping one of these for me to make a cowl with. I prefer to have my cowls really tall and kind of tight fitting around my neck. This way I can wear it with like a long sleeve shirt or a sweatshirt or something like that. And I can still keep my neck and everything warm. And it looks really cute like this, but also if I'm outside, I can put it up around my ears and keep my ears warm and kind of just like huddle down in there as I'm running into a store or something. So I like really tall cowls for that reason. See like that. I can just kind of like hide down in there. 
I don't like being cold. So this works for me. And another really cool thing about this pattern is it's super simple to adjust and make with any yarn weight that you want. So that is super handy. And I really want to make one with bulky yarn. I love bulky yarn cowls and scarves um, because they're just extra squishy and cozy. I also couldn't resist making one with some of my zebra yarn. I was really surprised at how much I loved this yarn worked up. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the way it looks in a hank, but when I started working with it, I'm like, wow, it does have a really pretty look to it. I will show you one of the hanks so you can see what I'm talking about. So I was really surprised to see how pretty it was worked up. And again, I can't resist with teal because it goes with anything that I wear. That is all of the finished projects that I have. So now I will show you what I am working on. In my last episode, I showed y'all the triangle cowl pattern that I was designing. I decided to make this one with two hanks of yarn. So there will be two size options in the pattern. I'm working with two colorways from my coffee shop collection. We have chai latte and Earl Grey. Y'all, I'm usually not a fan of brown, but I love gray. So I figured this would be a really good balance for me. I'm alternating the colors every two rows. I feel like that's really going to just show off the colors more. And when I do it this way, I don't have a bunch of ends to weave in. I literally have one end right now. Wait, did I just lie? Okay. I have two ends. And the rest of the ends, I can carry along the edge here. You can't even really see it honestly weaving in the ends is usually what keeps me from pairing a lot of yarns because I just don't like doing it so this is really like right up my alley and I know that I'll like stick with this one so I can't wait to finish that one so that was one of my crochet whips I'm still working on the same knitting whip and I've made some progress on this here we go this is the Copland Shawl by Expression Fiber Arts. And this is my first time making, well, I say that I have another whip going with sock weight yarn. So I guess this is my second time working with sock weight yarn. And it is very different because I have always worked with worsted weight or bulky yarn. And I was just kind of getting okay with crocheting with DK weight. And then I go and lose my mind and start knitting with sock weight. So it feels like I'm moving in slow motion, but I did go into this project with an open mind and telling myself that it was going to take a really long time. So just enjoy the process. And how cute are these needle stoppers? They're little donuts. They're frosted donuts. So cute. So that's the progress on that. And I only have one other whip to show y'all. Who else needs an instant gratification project when they're working on projects that take a while? I know I can't be the only one. So I am working on a cotton washcloth. This is my simple cotton washcloth pattern. I say washcloth, but I mean dishcloth. I'm going to use it in my kitchen. This pattern is one of my very first designs. So it's another one that I'm working on going back and updating. I was just looking at the blog post the other day and I'm like, oh my goodness, these pictures are terrible. But one thing I always told myself was like, work with what you have. And when you know better, you do better. So now that I have better backdrops and better lighting and all the things I know better, so I'm gonna do better. So I can't wait to update that pattern 
And I don't know if I'll go back and update that original blog post or if I'll just make a new one um, with new pictures and all the things and then still link back to the old one. We'll see how that goes, but I can't wait to finish this. It's been a really, really long time since I've made any um, dishcloths. I tend to binge crochet. I'll get on a kick where I want to sit and make dishcloths. And then I burn myself out and it'll be like a year before I make them again. And the last binge that I had, I ended up gifting all of those dishcloths away. So I really need to update the ones in my kitchen. The ones I'm using now are probably, oh goodness, three or four years old. So I'm excited to update them and get some new fresh colors in there. I am using Dishy Yarn from We Crochet. This is one of my new favorite cottons. I love using this brand for dishcloths. It's really sturdy and tough, but it also has a nice feel to it. It's not too rough to work with. That's why I love it. And if you haven't tried Dishy, they have some really good sales every once in a while. So usually you can get one of these for like under $3 if you catch one of the sales and then you can like stock up. I highly recommend this brand. And as you can see, that cubby and that cubby, that's all Dishy. I have an obsession. I mean, there was a sale and I kind of lost my mind. It happens. But I did include some of these in one of my yarn club boxes. I can't remember which one it was, but all of my premium members got one of these dishy yarns. So while I bought for them, I had to buy for myself. That is my story and I'm sticking to it. So I'm sure I will be making more of these, but I couldn't resist this really pretty um, blue color. I really like it. That is all of my whips that I have going on over here. So one thing I'm trying to do this year when it comes to projects, I'm trying to have one going that like challenges me and kind of makes me step outside of my comfort zone. And that is the Copland shawl, the knitting shawl with sock weight. Um, sock weight is definitely out of my comfort zone. Then I try to pick a project that is new to me, either a new design that I'm working on or picking a pattern from another designer. And then I always have to have some type of instant gratification, mindless project. One of those really quick projects that you can just whip up and have a completed project in hardly any time at all. And that doesn't take a lot of brain power. So that's my goal this year is to have a few things going at one time by picking projects that are challenging and a little bit intimidating that I'm going to step out of my comfort zone and learn more and more about knitting and crocheting because there's a bunch of crochet projects that I've been wanting to try, but I'm just like, Ooh, I'm either super intimidated or I'm just like, Oh, will I be dedicated enough to like really put the time in and finish this project. So that's my goal this year. Let me know if there is a project that you have been wanting to try, but you're the same way. Like, I don't know if I would actually see this through to the end or it's way out of my comfort zone. Let me know in the comments what patterns you've had your eye on, but haven't like jumped on yet. Here are my finished projects and ones that I'm working on. And now I want to share with you some really neat things that I got in this week. I already showed you the needle stoppers on my project, the cute little donuts. I couldn't resist getting a pair of teal ones too. I love Kay's Crochet Creations needle tips because they really stay put on my needles and they're super cute. So I couldn't resist ordering these plus the like rose gold pink colored ones. And then I also got a set of these. I already have a set of these in like a glittery silver color and a teal color, but I lost them. I think I still have one of the teal and one of the silver. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of sad about that. That's part of the reason why I ordered more. And then she also included these in my package. And I love having two different ones because I'm super new to knitting. And sometimes in the evenings when my brain is really tired and I just like want to pick up my project and go, I'm not paying attention. And there's times that I started working from the wrong side of my work. And that's part of the reason why I had to start and stop that project so many times. Like I literally, I don't know how to fix the errors. So I just had to frog the thing completely. Mm, wanted to pull my hair out. So I feel like with having two different ones, I can make a note that like this one is on my working needle. So then when I 
pick it up. I can just look at it immediately and know and not have to sit here and like, okay, you know, trying to figure it out, especially when my brain is tired. Now that I got those in, I can semi-retire the ones that I made with a wine cork. I was so sad because I kept losing my little needle stoppers. So I was like, what do I have here that I could make? for needle stoppers. And I'm like, oh, wine corks. I have a ton of wine corks. So if you're ever in a pinch and need to make some needle stoppers, wine corks are awesome. All of these goodies are from Kay's Crochet Creations. And I will link her Etsy shop below because she has a ton of different styles of these needle stoppers. And she also has really, really cute stitch markers. So in case you're interested, I'll link that below so you can check her out. Another goodie that I got in this week are these cords. So you can put these on your knitting needles. And then if you need to try something on, it just gives you a little bit more room. So you don't accidentally pull on your work or anything. And I also plan on using these as like a lifeline because like I said, I kept messing up and I didn't know how to fix the error. So I would just have to frog the whole thing. So I feel like if I have a lifeline in there, I can frog back to this area and then Google or like YouTube or phone a friend, something like that to figure out how to fix it. And I don't have to like frog the whole entire thing. So I'm excited to try these. I got these from the Knitting Barber and it's three cords. It's two 30 inch cords and one 60 inch cord. That is all the fun stuff that I got in this week. I was hoping to get my hooking reader stitch marker of the month package, but it didn't come in and I'd already put off doing this video for two days, hoping the package would come in. So now, you know, like it's guaranteed to come in today. I will just show y'all what is in it. Um, next week. I when don't I really do. have a lot going on this week because I'm in full yarn club mode. So I'm still dying all of the yarn for the yarn club. I am almost done. I can't talk much about it because I'll end up just like spilling the beans and talking about all the things and telling you everything that's in there. And I don't want to ruin the fun for my yarn club members. So I'm not going to talk much about it. I am hoping to finish up dying all of the yarn this weekend. And then I will start dying up the coffee shop collection orders and get all of those done and out. So once all of the yarn club is dyed and dry, then we start the whole hanking it all up, labeling it, getting in all the boxes. There's a lot that kind of goes on behind the scenes. I try not to put too much on my plate when I am in full on yarn club mode. Once I get those shipped out, then I will kind of play around a little bit, maybe dye some yarn or start a new project or something like that. I do have the crochet along with my yarn club members this weekend, and I'm really looking forward to that. I showed you the Bristol cowl earlier. Now I just need to decide what color I'm going to use for the one for the crochet along. I'm kind of thinking about doing another tweed. I absolutely love this color and this has been in my personal yarn stash for a while. So I'm kind of leaning towards this one. I also thought about doing mood swings with extra mood. This one's also in my stash. I feel like with the simple texture of that pattern that a heavily variegated yarn would look really, really gorgeous. So this was also an idea that I had. I've narrowed it down to four, so we have two more to go. This is the other one. Okay, jewel tones. Y'all know jewel tones. They are my jam. This is one of the colorways from my holiday boxes this year. This is Jolly Jewels. And when I saw this dry and hanged up, I was like, oh my goodness, I have to keep this. So this went into my personal yarn stash very quickly. And then the last option is this beautiful colorway by Leap of Faith Yarn. This is called Christmas tree lights. And when I saw this on Instagram, I was like, oh my goodness, I have to have it. I love this really pretty pale green color. And then of course, all the speckles. Show it off a little bit. 
I will post a link to her Etsy shop in the description in case you want to check out her yarn. So let me show y'all the four that I narrowed it down to all together. Here we go. Those are the four options for the Bristol cowl and I can't decide. I would love to know which one of these you would choose. So let me know in the comments which one you would choose for the cowl. The other really fun thing that I kind of have in the works is a possible trunk show at a yarn shop in Arkansas. I had the pleasure of meeting Lori with Arkansas Yarn Co. She was a guest on the Makers Gonna Sell podcast, the podcast that I co-host with my friend Cheryl with Hypnotic Yarns. It has been so much fun getting to know her. And just kind of hearing about the yarn shop side of things. So her and I have been chatting and we are talking about doing a trunk show and just some other fun stuff. So hopefully I'll have more on that soon. I'm super eager to get over there and to see her yarn shop. I've seen pictures of it on Instagram and it looks absolutely gorgeous. I can't wait to get over there and meet her in person and, you know, go through and squish all the yarn. This will be my first time having my yarn in a yarn shop. So I'm beyond excited and just a little nervous too. I will have more details on that coming soon. Well, that is all that I have going on over here. And in full transparency, this is the second time that I have recorded this podcast episode two. I recorded the first version of it this morning. I was super excited. I had on this really pretty um, pale pink sweater that I absolutely love. My hair was actually dry and looked decent really well. I had like all my notes laid out, had everything planned, and um, I got done recording and saved it. And I just had such a really good feeling about it. I was like, wow, that, that was way better than the first one. So then I bundled up and went outside and washed a bunch of yarn and got all of that done. And then, um, I come in and had some lunch and I'm like, okay, I'm going to sit down, cuddle with my dog a minute, and I'm going to edit this podcast video and get it up on my YouTube channel. And, you know, just everything was just going to be perfect and done. And all the things were great. And then. <laughs> my video had no sound no sound it was fine everything was fine I was fine yeah it was just one of those moments that I just had to laugh about it so you know like when something happens and then all of a sudden your mind starts backtracking and like paying attention to things that you didn't really pay attention to in the moment that happened I remembered my microphone has a little red button right here. And I remember it blinking and I just didn't even pay any attention to it. I'm like, oh, hmm, okay. Blinky light means it's working, right? I guess that meant that I had it on mute or something. I don't really know, but it was super interesting how that came back to me. And I realized there was no sound. I immediately got back on my computer and started like trying to problem solve and be like, okay, maybe it's me. Maybe there really is sound somewhere. I'm clicking on everything. Like, please, please tell me there's sound. Like there's sound, right? Like we're going to stay positive. No, there was no sound. So I finally just had to face the fact that I was going to have to record this um, and that it was just a lesson learned. One thing that I have really, really learned is that being a business owner is like 95% problem solving. And I had to be like, okay, I can let this derail me and not get a podcast episode up this week and just be like, you know what? I tried, I'm done, whatever. Um, but I'm like, no, absolutely not. I'm not going to let this derail me. It was lesson learned. And now I know to test all the things before I record for an hour. I just thought I would share that with you. And I hope it's just encouraging for you that sometimes we don't get it right the first time, but don't give up. Let it be a learning experience. Um, have your meltdown. You know, sometimes it's like, we just have to get it out. I didn't have a meltdown this time. So I'm super proud, but I wanted to, and I'm just like, nope, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to do it again. So here I am doing it again. Maybe I just needed that to just kind of get the jitters out. Maybe this one was better. I don't know, but I just wanted to share that with you. And that is all that I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, happy yarning.